Welcome back all of you book nookers and terrain builders, Dalen with another random making encounter. And today I'm gonna to show you how I solder these NeoPixel buttons. So a little quick trip down memory lane for those of you who aren't familiar with NeoPixels. They are RGB and RGBW LEDs that are controlled with microcontrollers through these little connections. Now, they come in a bunch of different form factors, but they're generally controlled through a single data pin or data line. And then the other two connections are for our ground and power. The nice thing about these is they can be controlled, a strand of them controlled through three wires and we can basically string these and control each pixel individually for color, brightness, um, and then some other blinking special effects, flickering, things like that. Now today we're gonna to talk about these buttons because I find these to be, of all of the NeoPixels, the most affordable when buying them kind of in bulk. Um, they tend to be somewhere in the 50 to 60 cents per LED range, which is really not too shabby. Now, the one downside is they do require a little bit of soldering onto solder pads, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, first thing to note is they come in various quantities, and they're gonna all be stuck together in these little bulk circuit boards. And so the first thing I do is I break them apart very carefully to make sure that I don't damage the circuit board or the solder pads on the back side. Once I have the right number of LEDs broken out, I'm going to either use a template or the model itself or you know this my roof uh, panel for my book nook to start to think about where I'm going to place the NeoPixels. One thing I want to start planning for is the back side of my book nook is where I'm going to probably mount my microcontroller. So I want to make sure that I'm understanding where the back is, where the first LED is, and start to position them in place. To do that, I use this poster putty, or you can use um, double stick tape or other ways to kind of hold them in place. But this is just going to help me with soldering and planning. Uh, one thing to be thinking about is really the orientation of the solder pad. So I, there is definitely an input, an in side of the NeoPixel and an out. So I'm going to be thoughtful in how I'm aligning it so that the connections are going from in to out, basically in to out. So I wanna make sure that those pads are oriented and it's marked on the LED or on the NeoPixel. And so this would be the inside and then there's an outside and it goes to the inside and then it goes out and we kind of work our way around. Now, an important thing that is nice about NeoPixels is they don't necessarily need to be wired in the order, in any really particular order with regards to your layout. You're able to control each of these, color, brightness, um, in individually through the microcontroller. So what we're really trying to do is do path of least resistance. I'm always planning for my wiring to be as simple as possible. So here I'm sort of planning to see, I need to sort of bend the wire and make the wire sort of curve around. And so I'm angling so that as it's running along, it is the orientation of the pads is going to allow me to sort of adjust it so that I can get a bit of an angle on the solder pads to make a more natural curve around to the final pixel. Now, as I said, NeoPixels are controlled by addressing them individually. So basically, this is pixel zero, and then this will be pixel one, LED one, LED two, LED three. And so we're gonna control that all in the Arduino code. This really is, to me, why I love NeoPixels or RGB microcontroller controlled LEDs so much. It just doesn't matter how I sort of wire them into the diorama. And I only have a single wire that I need to, or strand of wires that I need to connect them all. So it really keeps everything very clean. 
The next thing we're going to talk about is how I actually start to get the wires cut and then soldered into the NeoPixel pads. The first thing I'll do is pre-tin all of the pads. So basically go in and do a little bit of pre-soldering. Here you can see more clearly the, the in and out markings and sort of the ground and five volt. I'll go around and do all of this pre-tinning for all of the NeoPixels that I'm gonna be soldering up. One of the things I try to do is be very efficient with my soldering, so I wanna do things in steps. Now that I've got everything pre-tinned, I'm gonna start thinking about wiring the wire lengths and start to cut things to size. I'm using silicone coated or insulated wire. I really like silicone wire because the insulation doesn't melt like PVC insulated wire does, and it's very flexible and supple. When I strip the ends, I'm really trying to strip just the amount that's the equivalent length of the solder pad. I don't want to have too much wire exposed because I don't want to bridge the connections. That could be bad, especially on the data connections. I need a clean break between the in and the out. And the same is true for the positive and negative terminals. I really want this to be a very clean connection. I'll do the same pre-tinning for all of the wire because I really don't want to spend a lot of time trying to hold the wire and hold the solder and touch the pad and do all of these steps. I just don't have that many arms. So I want to minimize my amount of things that I have to be holding. So with the pre-tinned wire, I'll just touch that to the solder pad and let that melt and fuse together and become a little blob of solder. Touch a little bit to this tip of the soldering iron just so they have a tiny bit, a little reserve on the tip, and then come in and touch it and solder the piece together. There is a logical way, which I'm not soldering here, to really solder these. I probably should have soldered them in a way that is avoiding me having to try to solder something in between, this data line in between. So really a best practice for me would be to solder things so that other things are not getting in the way. Once I have the three sides, I'm going to connect it to the next NeoPixel. And in this case, this is the outside and it's going into the in on the next NeoPixel. And so I want to make sure that I'm going from out to in to out to in as I work my way around. I'm going to start thinking now about how I work around these curves and again looking at the angle of the solder pads to create a nice gentle curve in the wire so that I'm not creating a lot of strain and I also have a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of slop in case I want to position the NeoPixels a little bit differently once I start to go to the final mounting. One thing that I've found that I've done in the past is cut the wires too short. I was trying to be a little overly tidy and efficient and I created a lot of strain. So to avoid that, I just usually give things a little bit extra to just give it a little bit of strain relief and again, some more flexibility in where the NeoPixels get positioned. For me, one of the things when I'm doing any soldering project is efficiency. And so doing things in batches or in groups and doing them in steps really for me is a way to get through some of these bigger, more tedious soldering projects. If you're doing a lot of NeoPixels, you've got six pads per NeoPixel times however many uh, LEDs you're putting in. And so all of the wire that has to be cut, all of the soldering, all the pre-tinning, it gets to be a sort of a monotonous project. But if I do it efficiently, I really find that this can go very, very quickly. I can probably solder these up in maybe 10 or 15 minutes, no problem, if I'm really thinking ahead and putting everything together. Now, this is the final wiring for these four NeoPixels. You can see there's a little bit of slop, so I can tweak things and I can adjust the NeoPixels if I need to. One thing that you're not seeing is the wire 
that is going to connect it to the microcontroller. So I haven't put that last bit of wire that connects it to the microcontroller on the back side of the book nook because I don't really know how long that needs to be. Well, I hope you found this interesting. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you back again real soon with another random making encounter. Shh.